Uh, so as mentioned, I'm, I'm a solutions engineer at HubSpot and I work out of uh, uh, our Dublin office um, remotely at the moment, of course, but uh, uh, I've been on, I've been with HubSpot just short of four years now. Um, most of that time was spent on the services side. I was a technical consultant working um, with customers on a project uh, by project basis. Uh, and about a year ago, I moved over to the solutions engineering team, um, which is a pre-sale role. Uh, and even before that, I was working in, 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 I suppose, in an e-commerce capacity. I used to be a, a web developer uh, on a marketing team for a payment gateway based out of Dublin, which uh, coincidentally is right next door to uh, HubSpot house offices uh, now. So. Um, E-commerce has been something that's been a passion of mine for a long time, and uh, naturally it's something that uh, I deviated to within my role. So uh, really today, um, what I'm hoping to cover, uh, we have about 60 minutes, uh, and I've divided it up into two components. The, the first 20, I'm hoping to just run through a couple of slides to set the scene and, and talk a little bit about how HubSpot can really help um, to boost your sales from an e-commerce uh, capacity. Uh, specifically in relation to, to Shopify. Um, and then for the remaining uh, 40 minutes, I want to actually jump into the tool and show you uh, around and, and kind of go under the hood a little bit more to, to add more of a practical element to that. Uh, you can kind of see there the agenda. That's, that's loosely the, 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 the structure of what I want to run through. And another thing I would say is that um, you know, there's, there's a lot of different integration options when it comes to um, using HubSpot uh, with in conjunction with an e-commerce platform. So uh, we have a native integration with Shopify, which is provided uh, out of the box for any, any uh, customers um, that are using HubSpot. But we also have options to integrate with other e-com platforms as well. So, uh, you know, WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Magento, um, and even homegrown systems. So a lot of the functionality you see here today and what we're going to be talking about uh, is also possible with those other platforms. Uh, and I'll be touching on the integration options in a, in a little bit more detail. So I have two uh, key objectives really by the end of this session. The first one is just to make sure that everyone out there knows how HubSpot can help uh, from an e-com perspective and you know uh, the tools that we have and how they can, they can really help you and your team. Um, and the second one then is obviously the integration options that exist because it's one thing to have the tools there. It's another thing to actually get that data into HubSpot to begin leveraging them. So I want to just uh, ensure that there's a clear understanding of the, the, the ways you can go about integrating your, your e-com store with uh, HubSpot. So before we dive into um, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of things, I just want to kind of look at the current landscape and set the scene. So this is um, a chart I've, I've taken from, from Shopify, actually. They, they published this, and interestingly, it's pre-COVID. So these numbers likely have, um, have been inflated to a certain extent. But what it's showing is the total retail sales worldwide um, from 2017 right up to 2023. 20, uh, and you can see that uh, 2023, it's coming short of $30 trillion. So it's quite a sizable market. And as I say, we're going through a very interesting time now in terms of digital transformation, um, not too dissimilar to when you know the, the, the internet first came around or social media came to light and people began flocking to Facebook and, and even Bebo, if, you can, uh, if anyone's familiar with that. So we're going through a similar shift in terms of our buying uh, patterns right now, uh, given um, you know, what life is like in a, in a, in a, in a COVID-19 world, as it were. Um, and it's really quite interesting to see how this um, correlates to the e-commerce space. Now, interestingly, out of that $30 trillion uh, that we're looking at there, 22% of that uh, can be, is, is forecast to be attributed to, to e-commerce sales. So it's a very sizable chunk of um, revenue that uh, we, we, you know, we can tap into here. Uh, and really, I just want to, to paint the scenes here to give you an idea of um, just how lucrative this market is. And if we look at the numbers on a global uh, spectrum as well, um, so the We've already said it there. There's about $4.2 trillion worth of sales expected by the end of 2020 uh, globally. We've got about $6.5 trillion expected uh, in e-commerce sales by the end of 2023. And about 2.1 billion people are expected to purchase online in 2021. And again, um, I, would, I would say that this is, this is pre-COVID. Uh, so a lot of this... Um, is likely um, has likely increased. Um, so, so it's a very, very big market, which I'm, I'm sure you're all aware of. Uh, and interestingly, just given that this is um, um, a, an event based in Ireland, I wanted to show some numbers relating to the Irish market when it comes to e-com. So by the end of 2020, uh, $3.3 million uh, of sales is expected to come through e-com channels. 
Uh, we've also got about $4.7 million uh, worth of sales expected by the end of 2024. So that's about a growth rate of about 8.6% year on year. So um, a very healthy uh, level of growth. And then there's a 77.5% um, adoption rate. So effectively, 77.5% um, of the population are expected to be purchasing online by the end of 2024 in some capacity. So there's a lot of opportunity here. Now, th this is how we can then turn that opportunity into a, a real achievable goal by using potentially HubSpot. So HubSpot have a number of different tools that can really um, complement your e-commerce marketing efforts and your, your, your e-commerce platform in general. Um, the first one is really our CRM. So uh, it's at the core of all of our tools. Um, the CRM is uh, the 360 degree overview of your customer data. It's where we can see all of their activity, the pages they viewed, the emails they've opened, um, all of the information they've supplied in some way, shape or form via maybe form submission from previous campaigns, uh, all in one um, uh, single source of truth. In addition to that as well, we also have their, their deals, so their transactions that have synced over from the respective platforms. Uh, and this is displayed in a pipeline and we can very easily see uh, the chunks of revenue that are sitting in particular stages of that pipeline. And we can all, also use that for forecasting and various other uh, sales reports, which we'll look at in a little bit more detail later on. So the CRM is really at the heart of all the HubSpot tools and it's really what is feeding data into our email tool and our workflows tool. Um, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll be touching on those um, a little bit later on, especially in, the, in the, the, the demonstration part of this demo. The second one then is um, email marketing. I mean, this is a, a key component of, of, um, of e-commerce. And uh, I think there's something like 70% of uh, carts where revenue is lost to carts being abandoned. Uh, so there's a big chunk of revenue that's there to be obtained um, by reminding people that you know they've left things in their cart, but equally maybe sending emails, uh, you know, suggesting new products, or um, you may know that they've purchased previous products in the past, and you want to position another product or cross sell or upsell sort of opportunity. So HubSpot gives you the tools uh, to uh, do just that uh, in a very in a very simple way, um, for that matter. So we allow you to send personalized emails um, to specific lists of contacts. Um, and again, that personalization is all uh, possible based on the data in the CRM. Uh, you can also automate the sends of those emails. So it's not a manual process where you're sending to specific lists of individuals. Uh, you can basically set up rules to trigger emails being sent when someone matches a specific criteria. Um, and that can be very, very useful because it's simply uh, set it up, turn it on and leave it running in the background to do its thing. Uh, in addition to that as well, our email uh, tools have a couple of um, advanced features, smart content being one of them. Um, I like to describe smart content as personalization on, on steroids. Uh, it's a way of not only personalizing the, the email with maybe someone's first name or last name or, or whatever the case may be, but it's actually tailoring the content in the email based on uh, where they are in their buying journey or potentially uh, what segmented list they're a part of. So what demographic um, that, that they're, they're a member of or they're a part of. Uh, we have A-B testing tools as well, um, so you can ensure that the emails you're sending out uh, are, are doing the job and that you know, you're, you're, you're optimally achieving the results you want. And then for others as well who, who want it, there, there is the option of a dedicated IP, and this is an add-on. And this is typically used in larger, um, with, with larger customers who are sending anywhere between maybe 30, uh, 20 to 30,000 emails a month. Um, it's really just a way to white label um, uh, your email sending. So HubSpot is an email service provider um, and a lot of uh, customers use HubSpot to send email and it's done on shared IPs. But if you'd like, we have a dedicated IP option that basically gives you full control of, of, of your IP um, and, and really from a white labeling perspective that can be uh, important. And I'll be looking at the email tool in a little bit more detail um, in a few moments. We also have um, uh, our workflows tool and the workflows tool is particularly useful um, because we can actually re-engage for example with uh, customers that were previously very active and who have since dropped off. So you can see here uh, this is a workflow that's triggered if somebody maybe had a, a recent deal that was closed one uh, more than 12 weeks ago. We can configure that so you can get as creative as you like with these, um, these workflows. Um, but it can be particularly useful for re-engaging with existing customers. 
And also, also if you have your, um, your Google Ads account connected to HubSpot as well, you can actually sync data back from the CRM um, to the, the, the respective ads platform for the purposes of retargeting. So that can be particularly useful, uh, maybe to promote specific products to people uh, based on their, their interests or their pages that they've viewed. Cross-selling and upselling is a big one too. Um, so it, we can use HubSpot to identify uh, what products people have purchased uh, in the past. And we can actually then send emails to recommend alternative products that are in a similar uh, category. So that can all be done uh, via workflows. Rewarding loyalty as well. Um, I think, you know, I think when it comes to e-commerce, the, 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 the word of mouth and, and loyalty is such a big component of this. And it's important that we, we reward our customers for their, their, their repeat purchases and that they're coming back time and time again to do, to do business with us. So you can also send out emails to people when they hit a certain criteria, maybe they've purchased X amount from you, or maybe they have a, a total, they've, Y number of deals uh, or orders associated with them uh, and indicates that they're a frequent buyer and someone that's uh, using your services on a, on a daily basis. Something as simple as well as just sending someone a, a, an email on their birthday can, can do wonders. Um, if you want to maybe send a discount code and tell someone to treat themselves or whatever the case may be, you can use our workflows tool as well to actually send uh, automated emails every, every, uh, every year to someone on their, on that special day. Uh, and that can be uh, just a, a nice personalized touch um, and you, you do see it done typically across a lot of um, different uh, e-commerce um, uh, uh, businesses. And I think as well we've, we've probably um, you know walked into a shop and uh, you know it, it's typically if you purchase a product go up to the counter and someone maybe grunts at you or doesn't say a word it's a very bad experience and you leave that shop with a very negative outlook. Um, and I think the same goes for, for, for e-commerce. It's, it's, it's nice to uh, thank people for doing business with you, especially if they're new customers that maybe have never used your service before or been to your store before. So you can also trigger emails to be sent based on someone completing um, their, their first purchase, for example, with you. And this could be a nice way to just harness a relationship, build a bit of trust and uh, say thank you. And again, as mentioned, abandoned cart really is at the heart of, of, of e-commerce um, marketing is making sure that people know that they've left um, items in their cart and prompting them or reminding them to come back to their cart to purchase. So you can do all of this uh, with workflows. And again, we'll be, we'll be exploring that in, um, when, I, when I start to walk through the tool. And also, I think this is a particularly useful one, um, replenishment. Uh, often overlooked. So some of you may be selling products that have a certain um, shelf life or, you know, after a certain number of days or weeks or months, you may need to renew it or purchase new, new add-ons or additions to it. So you can actually run replenishment campaigns as well from, from HubSpot. Now, in this example, I've chosen to use um, uh, a drone uh, manufacturer. So somebody purchases a drone um, and we wait for 60 days and we send them an email to see if they maybe need new parts for that drone because naturally, uh, you know, drones, the, the, the wings break or they need to be maintained or repaired. So depending on the industry you're in and what you're selling, replenishment is, is definitely a, a useful thing to explore and it can be achieved with HubSpot. And then number three is understanding your customers' behaviors and their buying habits. So it's, you know, a CRM is really only as good as the data that's being put into it and being able to make sense of that data as well. So our list tool is a way to do that. Uh, using lists, you can create segmented uh, buckets of customers uh, using a variety of different filters. So you can get very, very specific in who is being pulled into those lists. And you can then analyze those lists or you can choose to actually send emails to those lists. Uh, but oftentimes I find it's, it, they're best used as a, um, really as a, I suppose, a, an analysis tool. It, it's very interesting to create these filters and create these rules and look at the, the, the contacts, the individuals that are part of those lists to understand trends and patterns in their buying habits and behaviors. This is an example of a list that you could use to, to show maybe customers who've purchased a specific uh, product in the past. This is an example of a list that maybe you wanted to see if someone has viewed a specific page or product page on your website, uh, not only once, but maybe uh, several times or maybe within a certain time frame. 
And then this is an example of a list whereby we can actually uh, segment based on lo loyalty. So we're pulling in customers who have spent more than 650 euro with us, or they have ordered more than five times with us. And then another key aspect is reporting. Um, now, we will give you a lot of e-commerce da dashboards out of the box, and typically these are uh, used to report on the lifetime value of your customers. Uh, there is also the ability to create your own custom reports with that data, uh, examples being maybe what, what products are selling the most, um, what specific channels are, are helping to drive the most revenue. Um, so there's a lot of options there when it comes to, to reporting, and they can really complement the e-commerce platform and the reports that they provide uh, as well. This is an example of a type of report where we can look at maybe the average deal size by source. So along the horizontal axis, you'll see the different marketing sources that we have. Um, and you can see organic uh, search is, is, a, is, a, is a big driver of, of revenue there. We can see there's on average about um, $1,000 worth of revenue coming in from organic search. Equally, we can maybe see there social media only has a small chunk of that at, at $15. So these are the types of reports that you can create in order to get an, a picture as to what, what's working and what's not working. And this one then is products that have been sold um, over the last month. So we can, we, can dis, we can visualize this in a variety of different ways. I chose to use a, a, a kind of a donut uh, chart here, um, but it's helpful to understand what products are being sold uh, more frequently and with what are doing well. And then as well, just comparing month on month. So we can see um, daily deal totals uh, for this month versus uh, the, the previous month. So that can just be useful in terms of identifying areas of growth uh, and, and fluctuations. I mentioned lifetime value as well as being a key component. Um, obviously every contact in the, in the CRM is, is going to have deals or orders linked to them and those deals or orders are going to have um, amounts, uh, revenue associated with it. Uh, and what we can do with HubSpot is we can create reports to look at the source of a contact or any sort of information relating to a contact um, and, and really put a, put a number to that and identify uh, how that's helping to drive revenue. So in this case, I went with uh, marketing, um, the marketing channels or the sources of traffic to, to a website, and, and it paints a nice picture as to uh, really where that revenue is coming from. We can also uh, go a step further. HubSpot has uh, multi-touch revenue attribution, um, which is a part of our marketing tools. And this allows you to create uh, reports across a variety of different attribution models. So we have our U-shaped, our W-shaped attribution models, um, just assessing what top of the funnel or middle of the funnel activities are helping to, to, to drive the most revenue. And you can tailor these in a variety of different ways. Uh, in this report here, I'm basically looking at the interaction source. So I can see on the, the, the vertical axis, the sources of, of the, the visits to my website, and I can see the revenue they're generating. But equally, I can see overlaid onto that the different content types that are helping to generate that revenue. So I can see obviously direct traffic uh, is helping to drive a lot of revenue to the site with $11 million worth. Um, and a lot of that can be attributed to the website page. And a close second then would be our blog page. So using multi-touch revenue attribution, you can really get a clear understanding of, I suppose, the, the, the efforts uh, that your marketing team are having um, and the impact it's having on your, on your, your e-commerce and, and, and the ROI for driving ROI for your business. We also offer the ability to connect your ads account to um, uh, your, your ads uh, accounts to HubSpot. So we support connecting LinkedIn, um, Facebook, and Google ads to the HubSpot CRM. And when you do that, you can actually start to see the ROI um, being generated for your specific uh, campaigns. But what's particularly useful as well is the, um, the ability to sync data back from the CRM to those ad platforms. So I mentioned that we have our list tool uh, earlier on where we can create segmented groups of, of customers based on criteria. You can actually sync that data, those specific lists back to yeah, AdWords or Facebook, for example, and actually re-engage with those. So this can be particularly useful for creating lookalike audiences, um, website retargeting, um, or just promoting specific products based on um, their purchase history. And as well, I, I'm a big, uh, uh, I, I like to go to a website and see um, uh, a live chat widget. Um, I, I like to be able to, to talk to someone before I buy something. Uh, so HubSpot gives you the tools to create 
um, a live chat or a bot that you can place on your store to just ensure that people have the questions uh, answered that they need uh, before they make that purchase. Um, what's more as well is if you're on an enterprise tier, you can actually add your own custom coded snippets to these bots. Um, and this opens up a lot of opportunity. Um, so you could actually create a bot that maybe allows someone to supply an order number uh, and you query that against a database and, and give them an update as to where that, that, that order is or what the status of that order is. So you can very easily add live chat to your store um, and just give people uh, an avenue to reach out to you if needs be. I also wanted to touch on uh, inter integration options before I dive into the tools, just to give you an idea of what's possible. Now, um, Shopify, we have a native integration with Shopify, so uh, you can very easily connect your Shopify store to HubSpot in a couple of clicks, and that will sync your, your, your historic e-com data in, your, your, your customers, your orders, your, your products, uh, right into HubSpot and sync the ex new orders coming in moving forward. But there's also a couple of other options, um, and I wanted to, to, to show you here. Uh, you can use um, an iPaaS provider like Zapier or PySync to sync data in if you wish. Uh, and you can also build your own custom integrations if you'd like. Uh, we have an e-commerce bridge API, which is actually what we built our own um, native integration with. And that's available for you to, to use if you wish, and you want a little bit more control over what that integration does. Uh, it's important to note that if you go down that route, of course, though, uh, it's going to require um, a development resource on, on your end. If you're integrating WooCommerce, there's a couple of options. Um, HubSpot have a number of certified app partners uh, on, on our app marketplace. So Make Web Better is, is, a, is, a, is a common one I've seen used. Uh, Unific as well is another one that helps to bridge the gap between your WooCommerce store and HubSpot so you can enjoy those features that I just touched on. Again, iPass is an option. You can use PySync and Zapier if, if you wish. So it's kind of that low code, no code um, mentality. Uh, and Ecom Bridge as well. That's available to use if you want to create your own custom integration. Magento, we have Unific, Seed Commerce, and again, PySync, PySync and Zapier. So a lot of options there to connect Magento stores to HubSpot. And also the option to build your own uh, custom integration as well. And there's a bit of a, a pattern here. Again, big commerce, we've got a lot of options, uh, some provided by our integration partners, Groove Commerce, Seed Commerce, Unific, uh, and again, then PySync, Zapier, and if you want custom integration with the e-commerce bridge. And then you may also be, it's not, you know, I've, I've worked with customers who have built their e-com systems from scratch and have, um, it's just a homegrown e-commerce store built um, fully bespoke for them. Um, and just because it isn't, uh, uh, you know, a popular platform or something that other people are using, doesn't mean it can't be integrated. If you want to connect another store to HubSpot outside of the ones that we listed there, uh, there is options to do so. You can use the likes of PySync or Zapier. Um, there's also some enterprise level um, uh, uh, iPaaS uh, systems like uh, Workado or Trade.io um, that will allow you to actually uh, link uh, your, your store to HubSpot and sync data between. Or you, again, you could use the Ecom Bridge to just create a, a custom integration between your, your bespoke store and, and HubSpot to sync data in. And just on that as well, um, my, my understanding is that these slides are going to be shared after the, the um, uh, the, the event. So I, I've included a couple of resources and on the e-commerce bridge, I, I've mentioned it a couple of times. It's, it's basically a, a suite of endpoints that we provide that allows you to connect multiple e-commerce stores to your HubSpot portal. Um, and it then allows you to enjoy uh, some of those features that we, we just touched on earlier in these uh, slides. So I've included on this um, a video walkthrough. It's, about, it's a 45 minute long video um, I recorded where I, I basically share my screen and walk through how you could integrate with the Ecom Bridge and uh, what the different steps are and what that looks like from a user's uh, perspective. So that video is there for you guys to, to, to take away after today. Um, and also if you've any technical resources um, in house, I've included the, the, the API calls that I'm using in that video. So um, that just might be helpful for anyone who wants to explore that in a bit more detail. So now that we have gone through um, what HubSpot can do uh, and sort of set the scene and we've touched on integration options, what I'd like to do is actually go through a more practical example uh, and actually get into the tools and show you how this works. So I'm going to just uh, click through. Uh, I've got a fictional store that I set up here. Uh, it's called Jack's Books. Uh, it's built on Shopify and it's using our native Shopify integration to sync data into the HubSpot platform. 
Uh, again, uh, worth noting, um, this, this is a publicly accessible store. Uh, I've kind of designed it in a way that uh, there's a couple of resources here for anyone who's interested in um, using HubSpot in, in conjunction with their e-commerce platform. So a couple of months back, I did a video series on the HubSpot community. Uh, I touch on our e-commerce bridge and our APIs. So it, it, there's a, a couple of useful links there as well that, that um, might help you. But effectively, this store is, a, for all intents and purposes, a fully functioning um, bookstore. Uh, and obviously, people can come to this store, purchase their, the books that they want, um, and all of that data is being synced into HubSpot. Now, if we click in here um, on the back end of Shopify, we can see our orders, uh, we can see the, the different products we have, we can see the, the different customers that we have. And a lot of this is just test data that I've been, um, uh, you know, for me, conducting tests um, so that I can demonstrate this to you. Uh, in reality, you probably have uh, um, much, much more data in here. But the idea is that once this store is connected to HubSpot, those orders, those products, those customers actually sync into the HubSpot system. So what we're looking at now is, is the HubSpot tool. We're actually within the e-commerce settings of the HubSpot portal. Uh, and from within the e-commerce settings, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out here. Um, firstly, uh, we support connecting multiple stores. So in this case, I only have one connected, but you could have several stores connected here and you could filter between them. Uh, and we can actually look at the data that's syncing from those stores. So you can see that we've synced 32 products. I've got 32 products in my, my Shopify store and in my, in my inventory. Uh, we've synced 26 customers and we've synced 19 orders. Uh, we also have the ability to build out automation and I'll touch on that in a bit more detail later on. But this is really the, the, the kind of the central control system for the e-commerce integration. Um, it's worth noting too, uh, you know, the e-commerce platform is typically intended to be that source of truth. That's where the, the transactions are happening. And that is really where we want to be pulling the data from. So for the most part, the sync is one way in that when people purchase uh, on the store, we're simply syncing their, their details that they provide as a contact and we're syncing their order information as a deal. We do also support a certain level of two-way sync, uh, specifically around customer information. Um, not necessarily order information, but if, for example, you run a campaign in the future and somebody was to say update their address or their location or something like that, uh, we, we, we can sync that bi-directionally back to Shopify so that that data is always accurate. But again, that can be very easily configured from within here. Now, I've mentioned that we're syncing products to HubSpot products, Shopify customers to HubSpot contacts, and Shopify orders to HubSpot deals. If we actually take a look at where they, they exist in the HubSpot CRM. So products live within our product library. Um, and really this is just a, an overview of all of the products that I have in Shopify. Any updates I make to my product library in Shopify will be immediately uh, updated here. Uh, and these products that we see uh, are going to be shown at a, at a deal level in HubSpot as line items representing the specific items in their basket when they checked out. We also have the uh, contacts. These are your customers that reside in the CRM. Um, what you'll see here is a, a table of, of customers. Um, I've got about 19 in my system. Uh, in reality, you could have thousands. Um, but what's particularly useful about this is that you're actually free to filter this um, by a lot of different pieces of information. So a good way to filter this, for example, would be by the total revenue property that we have. This total revenue property is um, a cumulative figure that is the sum of all deals linked to an individual. So it, it's effectively their LTV. So I could actually filter this data um, by total revenue and say whether it's greater than or equal to a certain amount. Uh, but again, there's a lot more filters there to choose from based on all of the, the, the data in the CRM. Uh, and what's more is you can actually save these uh, views, uh, we call them, uh, so that you could go back to them at a later date. So you can see that we have tabs up here uh, towards the top. So we can actually create different tabs of contacts based on set filters. And this can be useful just to get a, a nice overview of what's happening um, and, and, and paint a clearer picture of the data in your, your CRM. All of these contacts as well will be linked to deals. And these deals are represented in a slightly different way. They live within the deals pipeline, um, specifically the e-commerce pipeline. So this pipeline has six predefined stages and within these stages uh, reside those orders from Shopify. Um, so for example, um, if I was to start the order process on the Shopify side, 
uh, a deal would be created within the, uh, the checkout pending stage. And just to give you an idea of how this works, I'm gonna navigate into my Shopify store. Uh, I'm gonna choose a book here and I'm going to click through to the checkout page. Now, at this point, I'll be taken through to the, uh, the, the, the Shopify checkout. I will see it there, brilliant. And if we actually navigate back to HubSpot and refresh this page, what we should actually see is a, um, uh, we should see in a moment, a deal being synced over. So I'll give that a second or two, but the idea is that this data is going to be syncing from the Ecom platform over uh, to HubSpot. Uh, we should see that come in in a couple of seconds, so I'll come back to that. But the idea is that as things change on the Shopify side, that data is being updated on the HubSpot end so that you can action it and, and, and base automation and, and uh, report on that data. And if we actually look at a specific contact, so you'll see that uh, this is an example customer that synced over from Shopify. And there's a couple of interesting things that we can see. This is their contact record. It's, it's effectively, it's almost like a, uh, the, a Facebook profile, if you will. Um, on the left-hand side, we have all of the properties for that contact. I'm displaying some information around the, the number of pages that they viewed, the source of their visit, the, the recent deal amount that they closed, how many deals they've associated with them. But there's also a lot more data being captured there. And I can actually configure that if I like. If I click view all properties, I actually have a large number of uh, information here, uh, different properties, different pieces of information that's being captured that I can actually very easily add to my view so I can have quick access to it. Again, if we also look here on the contact record in the, in the, on the timeline, so the timeline is really all of their interactions they're having with your, your, your website and your marketing content and um, uh, your potentially your sales team. So, You'll see here, if we click on filter activity, there's a lot of different um, activity types that we can filter by. So we have our page views, uh, we have our marketing emails, the opens and clicks, any form submissions they're having, any CTAs that they're clicking on, or any conversations that they're having with your team via live chat. So you can see there, this was a conversation I had on the store um, um, around uh, just the returns policy and I was speaking to somebody. So this is all rolled up into their records. So we have this clear overview of, the, the, of this information. And we can also see as well, we're tracking them. So we can see the pages that they're viewing, which is particularly useful uh, because this allows us to get a clear understanding of the products that they may be interested on, what they're doing on the website and helps us to really, um, I suppose, tailor our outreach and, and, and segment them accordingly for the purposes of marketing. And on the right hand side, we've got um, some um, records that are associated to this individual. So I can see that Jack is linked to the company HubSpot. And I can see that Jack is linked to uh, this specific deal. I only have one deal, but in reality, there could be several here. Um, so I can actually click through into that deal. So by clicking through into that deal, I have a very similar interface to the, to the one we just came from. And that's one of the things about HubSpot is the ease of use. Uh, it, it's quite a it's quite a, an easy platform to 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 get up and running on and to get to grips with because often there can be a lot of complexities when you're maybe starting out on a new system, but the 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 UI is intended to be super super simple, and at the deal level what we can see as well is we can see that deal amount uh, front and center we can see when that deal came in we can see what stage it's in so it's been processed it's been it's it's been um, processed by the 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 the, the order the fulfillment team. Uh, and what we can see as well is all the properties related to that deal. So we can see the currency, for example, of the deal, um, whether it was actually approved financially, was it the, the deal was successfully authorized, payment was accepted, um, where that deal came from. It came through as a result of web traffic. So there's a lot of information we can get at a deal level. And again, we also have our timeline, so we can filter based on activity happening at a deal level. And I think more importantly for e-commerce is over here on the right-hand side, the contact link to that deal with the products that are associated to that deal. So these are the products that I purchased on the Shopify store um, before this, this information was synced to, to HubSpot. Um, and this is how we're going to, this data is what will allow us to, um, you know, uh, create card abandonment emails um, and, and those cross-sell and upsell emails, uh, which we're going to be taking a look at shortly. I mentioned lists as well. The, this is the HubSpot list tool, the way of understanding uh, user behaviors. Um, I figured this list with um, 
some and or logic. So I'm basically wanting to look at all of the contacts who have, who have viewed a specific product. So greatest moments in Irish rugby at least three times. Or I want to look at people who have maybe viewed at a, a specific collection. Shopify have, have collections, categories of products. Uh, so anyone who's maybe looked at the sports category. Um, so anyone who has is pulled into this list and I can choose to uh, send emails to them or automate processes based on them being members of this list. But we're not confined to just page views. Uh, what we can also do is we can leverage a lot of other data in the CRM to get a, a more granular um, uh, view of, of the contacts that, we, that, that, that match that criteria. So we have our contact properties. We could also filter based on their, their company properties, maybe their contacts who are associated with companies that have a high annual turnover. Uh, we can also filter based on deal properties, um, line item properties. So these are the products at a deal level. So we can actually see, um, for example, contacts who have deals that are linked to products with specific names or fall into certain categories. Uh, and it's, I think potentially the, the, the most useful one being the, the page views because that really indicates the, the, the activity or the actions that they're doing on the site and where they're going. Um, but also what's particularly useful is the events. So HubSpot actually gives you the ability to trigger custom events, which are those more advanced user uh, interactions on your website outside of page views. It could be um, people using the search bar or um, maybe people um, getting to a specific stage in the checkout process or um, people logging in to their, to their, to, to their member, their, their, their profile. These events can be very helpful because you can actually segment based on the completion or the incompletion of those events in specific timeframes. So using this, you can get a very, very accurate picture of um, your, your audience and you can choose to actually uh, communicate with them. Another list as well, uh, I, I have no contacts that are being pulled in here because no one is matching this criteria, but this is just showing how you might create a list of people who have purchased a specific product. And again, you have all of the other filters to get as creative as you like with your, 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 your list criteria to, to hone in on that data set. And as well, I mentioned uh, loyalty and repeat customers. So this list is basically just anyone who spent over X amount with us, um, and who has had um, more than four sessions on the website. So they, they're, you know, they, they have been on the site a couple of times or anyone who has simply purchased more than six times from us. So we've looked at the, the, the CRM and how that data sinks in. Our, our Shopify customers are the HubSpot contacts. The Shopify orders are the, the HubSpot deals. Um, the Shopify products sync to HubSpot products and they live uh, on a deal level. Uh, we've looked at those records in a bit more detail and looked at the deal pipeline and how we can segment. What I want to do now is look more around the, the, the email marketing aspect and the, the automation. So within HubSpot, we have um, an email um, creation tool. This is the, the home screen of that tool, if you will, uh, where we have a clear overview of all of the emails that we're sending. Those emails can be associated to various campaigns if we have any in the, the account. Uh, and what we can see at a high level here are the various metrics relating to those emails. Um, very um, uh, standard, your open rates, your click-through rates, your bounce rates and unsubscribe rates, which are useful for understanding, uh, I suppose, which emails are performing particularly well um, versus others. What we can also do within HubSpot is analyze the data. So we can go a level deeper. Um, you can actually analyze the, the, the emails that are being sent from an account at, at, a, at a higher level. So effectively, we can filter by different uh, dates, different types of emails or different campaigns. And rather than looking at specific email metrics, we're looking at a, an overarching uh, figure that can help us understand our engagement rates. If I click on compare emails as well, this is a particularly useful tool. You can actually choose a variety of different emails here. So I'll choose maybe the happy birthday email and the, the football book information email, for example. And we can actually preview emails side by side and look at how they're comparing to one another. And you can actually compare up to 10 variants um, um, in this tool. So you can see as I add them, I'm basically updating the UI and I can look at this information and see how they're performing. So this can be particularly useful uh, in terms of um, getting a bit more information around, uh, I suppose, what, what is it that is making certain emails outperform others? In terms of the actual email creation, so that's obviously the reporting aspect, um, 
we have two ways of creating email. The first one is our drag and drop editor, uh, which we're in right now. This is just uh, an example of an email I put together um, in the drag and drop editor before this, uh, this event. But the way this really works is that we have on the left-hand side, the building blocks, our modules. So as, a, as a, a marketer working from within a HubSpot, I can very easily drag um, sections into this, uh, this interface. So for example, I could decide above this intro text that I maybe want to have three columns. Um, and within those three columns, I actually may want to have specific images displayed. Um, I also may want to have maybe the social media links above that. Uh, for, for, for argument's sake. So you can very, very easily drag information into the, the, uh, the body of the email to uh, get it looking the way you want. And then as you click on the different modules, you'll be able to configure them here on the left-hand side. So I could say, for example, change the color of this button, change where it's linking to, uh, customize the, 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 the text. Uh, we, we can do all of that. Not to mention, if we actually click into some information here, we can personalize the, the body of the email. So you can see here, I can choose any, any record in the CRM, the contact, for example, and I can then insert any information I have on them so it's tailored to them. You'll also notice, uh, if I click on more, I have the ability to add a smart rule. And what this is, is uh, this is what I, I mentioned, is that this is that personalization, personalization on ster steroids, whereby you can actually show different um, messages to people based on specific lists that they're on. So those lists we looked at originally, I could create, actually show a, a different message to my, my loyal customers. Um, so I can actually customize the body of this email. It could be sent to several different, um, I suppose, uh, groups of customers that match different criteria, but the actual body of the email has a different message displayed to them. So that could be maybe a coupon code, uh, or it could be different types of products based on their product interest. we uh, go back into the settings of this email. Of course, from within here, we can actually uh, personalize where this email is coming from. So this is coming from my own work email address, but whatever email sending domain you connect to the portal, you can leverage. We can personalize the subject line. We can also add smart rules to the subject line. So you can actually um, not only pers uh, make the body of the email smart, but make the, the subject of the, the, the email smart as well. Um, we can also A-B test those emails. So I could have variant B, and this allows me then, uh, if I go back here, to decide how I want to send this email. So, you know, what do I want to split that out over? Maybe 25, 25 for my A and B variant with the winning version getting the, the, that 50% uh, going out to them. Uh, we can choose the, the, the winning metric, and we can choose how long we want to run that test for. So all of that can be done from within uh, this interface. I think as well, it's one thing uh, to create these emails. It's another thing to ensure that they're rendering optimally. So what you can do from within here is you can choose to send a test email to yourself and you can actually choose to receive it as an, an individual so that you can test that the personalization is working. And you can go um, a level further and you can actually preview that email. So we see what it looks like on different uh, devices. And we also integrate with Litmus. This is provided out of the box. Uh, so you can actually uh, send this email to various email clients, uh, personalized as a specific individual, and see how that's performing on, for example, Outlook versus Gmail on maybe uh, Android. So you can get very, very, uh, uh, you can basically ensure that the emails you're sending are rendering optimally across all of these devices. If you wish as well, um, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but I do wanna highlight it is you can actually create your own custom coded email templates if you want a little bit more control. So if the drag and drop isn't giving you the flexibility you need, that's not a problem. You can build your email templates from scratch if you want and end up with something that you know visually looks uh, very, very nice and still has all of the same features regarding smart content, personalization uh, and A-B testing. So that's our email creation. Uh, those emails can obviously be sent to lists of contacts, uh, which is a, sort of a manual process, for want of a better word, where we create those lists and then we, we send those, lists to the, uh, those emails to those individuals. Um, but what we can also do is we can send these emails from our workflows tool, which is the automation tool. So you'll see here, this is a, a workflows tool. This is a, typ a typical example of a basic marketing workflow where we define an enrollment criteria. So this is the, the rules that someone has to meet in order to enter into this journey. 
In this case, I've just simply chose filling out a form. But in reality, you can use all of the data within the CRM um, to, to trigger these workflows. You'll see that once they come in, we send them an email with uh, their white paper, um, and we actually set them maybe to an MQL. There's a variety of different actions you can choose from. So we can delay for a certain amount of time. We can delay them until specific times of the, the, the week. Uh, we can also um, conduct if-then logic to actually send them down different pathways based on their, their, their behaviors and their interactions. And then of course, sending email is, is, is really the core component of this. So we can send personalized emails as needed. What you'll see here is after two days, we need to give them time to actually in interact with this. And again, I can configure this as I like. Uh, we, we check to see if they've actually clicked on a link in that email. And if they have, great, no further action is needed. If they haven't, we maybe send them another one to say, well, maybe you want to, maybe you missed this, you, you know, here's your, your, your email. And you can get very, very advanced with this. Uh, so again, the enrollment criteria is filling in a form. We're sending out an email. What you can see here is I've gotten a bit more advanced. I'm seeing if someone opens an email and if they don't open it, then maybe the, 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 maybe the subject line didn't resonate with them or maybe they opened it and they didn't click a link in it. So I wanna try a different outreach. So I'll send another email. Uh, and this time I'll include more options in that email, more links, more um, choice for the customer. And I'll, I'll let them choose their own way. So here I can actually see if they've purchased or if they've uh, clicked on product one, two, or three. And if they've clicked on product one, I'll send them information on product one. Um, and what you can also do here is if they've expressed interest in product one, you can actually add them to a specific ads audience. So you can sync that back to Google ads for, for um, um, advertising purposes. So there's a lot you can do from within workflows. I've seen very, very simple workflows, very, very complex workflows. Um, ultimately, it's a blank canvas for you to work on. But what I would say is that workflows are best used as a, as a network. Um, rather than trying to cram everything into a single workflow, I find if you have a, a, a network of workflows working together, it can be a very, very powerful asset to any marketing team. Now, these are all very general workflows. We also have the more e-commerce focused workflows. So this one is how we could welcome new customers. We're enrolling them based on their, uh, the deal type being new business and their purchase date being less than a day ago. So we send them a nice thank you email and we could actually add whatever various actions we want on the back of that. This, e this one here is um, the re-engagement email. So for example, they could have synced over, e-commerce contact is true from a, an e-commerce source, but they, the, the recent uh, deal close date is more than 12 days ago. So they haven't actually purchased since. But we could absolutely cater this to our needs. We could say is uh, 100 days ago, for example. Um, and we can add more criteria on here. Maybe the, the recent deal close date is 100 days ago and They've actually viewed a specific page, um, www. Uh, I'll just say example.com, uh, product A. So they viewed a specific page uh, at least uh, five times. So immediately you start to, to, to get quite um, broad with your, your, your enrollment criteria so that you're casting the net further afield so that you can bring people in that are matching that criteria. And we can actually send them an email to say, you know, we haven't heard from you in a while, is everything okay? Here's a discount code, maybe you want to, to, to come back and purchase. So there's a lot you can do there. Abandoned carts. So this really is the, 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 the core part of all of this. Um, when an order syncs over from Shopify, it's going to reside in the checkout pending stage for a period of 24 hours. You can actually use deal workflows to, to, to update the status of that order if you wish um, uh, within that 24 hour range. But if you don't, basically it moves into the checkout abandoned stage. And once it does that, this criteria is met and we send that abandoned cart email. And that's going to contain the, the, the uh, items in the user's cart at the time that they left the website and also a link back to the website. For contacts as well, rewarding our loyal customers, we can trigger workflows off the, uh, off the back of the total revenue, the, the, the LTV of that customer or the number of deals. Uh, we've got that happy birthday email I referenced earlier on. So this is set up to recur annually on the customer's birthday. Uh, and it's just a way for you to send a nice email out to them um, to, to, to just wish them a, a happy, happy birthday. The cross-sell and upsell. So in this case as well, uh, you can trigger workflows based on contacts being members of specific lists. So I created a list of people who have purchased specific products. Once they're added to that list, they enter into this workflow. We wait for seven days and then we send them an email to say, we saw that you purchased product X, maybe you'd be interested in product Y. Uh, and then again, you'll see, as we scroll down the way here, 
what I actually then do is I see, uh, you know, what, what links they clicked in that email. And this can give me an un, a good indication of their interests. So if they click on sport, we update them to say that they're interested in sports. We send them sports information. If they're interested in rugby. We send them rugby information. And again, this is, a, this is actually a pending value. So it's not replacing values, so that is an option. In reality, they could be interested in a variety of different topics. So really this tool is just helping you to capture that data over time. And you can then use that for your, for your outreach. And then finally, on the workflows front, this is just that replenishment email I referenced earlier on. So if they've purchased a book, for example, we maybe want to give them time to read the book. So maybe someone would get through a book within 30 days. So after that, we just say, look, it's been 30 days. How was the book? Maybe you want to, to, to come back and, uh, and, and check out these books. So you can do all sorts of things with these workflows. Um, the last few slides I just want to touch on before we finish up then is around the, the live chat element. So uh, if we go back to my, my, my store, actually, and if we go to the, the homepage of the store, you'll actually see that uh, on the uh, lower right-hand side, we have a little chat widget. Uh, and I can actually talk, so just uh, hello, uh, Jack. So I can communicate on this chat widget. And what we're actually going to see in here is the uh, information coming in here from that contact. So you can see there, um, I can actually now have a conversation with that individual. Uh, so hello, and we're having a, a two-way conversation. Uh, and what I actually have as well is on the right-hand side, the information as to who I'm speaking with. Uh, so I can see who this individual is. Uh, I can look at maybe the associated company. I can look at um, any orders that they may have. So you get a clear understanding of who I'm communicating with. And you can have different sources plugged into this conversations inbox. Live chat is one, Facebook Messenger is another, email is another, or simply a form is, is another. So there's a couple of different ways to let people communicate with you so that you can manage those communications in this central location. I mentioned the ads tool as well, the ability to connect various ads platforms to HubSpot, specifically LinkedIn, Google Ads. If you do this, you're going to see a screen that looks uh, similar to this. Uh, what we have here are, are different um, uh, campaigns here on the, uh, in the table. And we can actually look at uh, how these campaigns are, perform campaigns are performing over time. And one of the useful things about HubSpot is it's not designed to replace these ads platforms by any stretch. It's designed to complement them and work with them in, 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 in parallel. So by integrating your ads platform with the CRM, you actually begin to be able to see the customers that are clicking those ads. So who actually clicked that ad and purchased a product? Uh, what is the individual's name? Um, so that can really help from a, uh, a reporting standpoint to understand how much revenue it's helping to generate for the business. Um, we could see here, for example, you know, the, 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 the cost per click for this is 78 cents. This, uh, these customers came in and they, uh, they, they brought in revenue of over $1,000. And we can see that that ROI is over 500%. So this can be very, very helpful in terms of understanding um, what ad groups are working uh, best. You can click into that actually and look at the specific ad groups as well. So you can be creating these ads outside of HubSpot and simply syncing the data in as people interact with them ads from within the tools. So Facebook lead gen ads, um, uh, post engagements to boost social posts, uh, and also lead gen ads on, 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 on uh, LinkedIn. And as mentioned as well, creating an audience is a big thing. So if I want, I don't have to only report on ads, I can actually uh, sync data back to their respective platforms to create maybe a lookalike audience or um, you know, retarget people that have visited my website. That's all possible from within here. And then finally, just on the reporting piece, uh, HubSpot is going to give you um, a number of uh, dashboard boiler uh, templates out of the box. There's a big, big uh, variety of them here. With the store connected, you'll have the option to use the e-commerce dashboard. That's going to have a variety of different or, um, reports that you can add to your, your dashboard. It's going to look something like this. Uh, we can get a clear understanding of what's happening um, um, over the course of time. And what's really, really useful as well is we can click into this data. So you can actually view the specific um, um, deals that are linked to that, that, that figure. So you can really drill down into the information and you can set these reports to go out at specific uh, cadences to various members of your team. Um, we also have an extensive reporting library that you, you, you can leverage if you want. A lot of out of the box reports that can be uh, refactored as needed. And then finally as well, multi-touch attribution is a big, big thing. So understanding um, what, 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 
you know, it's, it's often not just first or last touch. There's a lot of touch points in between that helps to get revenue over the line. So the multi-touch attribution tool is a great way to do that. We can see potentially what revenue, uh, what, what content is driving the most revenue. Uh, we can look at the, the marketing channels broken down by content type. We could actually look at some of the, the bigger purchases and the, 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 the content that helped influence those purchases. We could look at our marketing campaigns and understand um, the, 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 the impact that different content types have had on them. So the, the revenue attribution is really, really integral. And then what I would say too, just on the integrations front, this is our HubSpot app marketplace. So you can come here and uh, you can, there's our native Shopify integration, but there's those other integrations I mentioned originally that you can click to, to install. Uh, pricing differs depending, but if it's the native Shopify integration, um, it's free to use. Obviously you need to be, um, you need a, a Shopify store set up, um, but once you're pay, uh, uh, using HubSpot, you're, you're, you're free to install that in the, in, the click of a, in the click of a button. And then for anyone who's interested, uh, we also have extensive API documentation if you want to go down the custom route. So that's always uh, an option. And I think just in the interest of time, the last thing I'll touch on then is I, I've included some useful uh, resources that you can take away. These are all publicly accessible resources. A lot of what I covered on the slides today. Um, and I know we're just out of time, but I'd really appreciate if anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and if they have any 